Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I am your host, Scott Ramp, and I shall usher you guys in through the weekend. We have a great weekend for you guys. I have a lot to talk about, but let's start off with a little a bit of weather. Uh, but of course, I'll, let me just tease a little bit of what I'm talking about today. Uh, today's Friday, and as always, I have Flagship Friday video of the week. I got pre-critic telling you all about the new movies um, before I even watch them. Um, there's Teen Talk, and they're beginning. It's going to be the season finale before the next year's flagship start. I believe that's going to start in mid to late January, so you can look for that. Uh, I got some city council. They're talking about Mountain Water Company, where the uh, um, president, of, well, maybe future former president of Mountain Water Company, speaks in um, some issues he has with the city of Missoula's uh, budgeting of Mountain Water Company. So we're here all about that in city council. I have new programs, and of course, as always, I have everything you need to know about the week and for you guys. But of course, let's start off with some weather. It's cold out there, people, and it's snowed probably about six to eight inches overnight. Not tonight, but the night before. So um, this morning, it's really, really bitter cold. So a lot of that snow that fell the night before has felt like sheetrock. So um, it is currently 12 degrees outside, well below freezing temperatures. Um, you have a winter advisory warning going on until 11 a.m. this morning. Uh, you have the 60 to a 10% chance of snow happening. Basically today it will be transitioning. Um, throughout the weekend, you have mostly cloudy and decreasing clouds and your high is going to be 9 degrees this weekend but the, but then by Sunday your high is going to be 20 and we'll be back to those regular temperatures and why not stay inside we got our Saturday drop in animation happening every Saturday and this Saturday is uh, the years uh, this year's last Saturday because you know the next couple of Saturdays are Christmas Eve and New Year's Eve so MCAT will be closed for the Saturday drop in animation drop in I keep on saying drop in, but you guys can totally check that out uh, and learn more information by going to MCAT.org. I'll tease that in a wee bit. Um, let's talk about what's going on with some snow. So here's your snow report. Here's a nice little look of what you guys can see with snow. Whitefish Mountain Resort, they got two uh, fresh inches of powder over the 24 hours. They have a 17 in the base, uh, 50 up in the mountain. Uh, you got uh, one inch of new, store, uh, new snow up in uh, Big Sky Resort. Blacktail Mountain Ski Area is about six inches. Bridger Bowl is about two inches. Lost Trail is about nothing, but of course you did get eight inches of snow in the last 72 hours, and they have a 24, 30 inch base rate. Um, Great Divide, you have uh, nothing, but of course three inches in the last 72 hours. And of course, Montana Snow Bowl, you didn't get any snow. So you have no fresh powder, but you still have plenty of um, snow up on the mountain to go out there, but it is a yellow, so there's some caution out there, but of course, some of you who are really want to snow board or ski or snowshoeing, if people still do that, are more than welcome to do all that and more. And uh, the next up, we got some news. So this is what's happening. I, I read this in the Missoulian this morning, so I suggest you guys check out the whole entire story. I kind of skimmed over it. The Missouri published an article. Uh, it's about a Polson principal at Lenderman Elementary. Um, and why is he so important? It's simple. He took a new approach to discipline, which resulted in a decrease in students sent to the principal's office and overall suspension. Uh, this is Principal uh, Finkbeiner. Uh, he arrived there uh, back in 2013 or so, but of course in 2012 there were well over 300 students that were sent to the principal's office. And of course this year there's only been about 25 or so with virtually no suspension in the last three and a half months. He says, this is what he says about suspension. If you're going to have a culture that values learning and puts children first, you can't achieve that if the kids are not in the building. Uh, this is a great article that uses proactive um, a lot in the Missouri article. Of course, um, kids today are underwhelmed uh, because a lot of time everything they need to know is in their hands via smart devices or computers. Um, uh, the kind of learning kids have to do nowadays are, hmm, I didn't look at it that way, or, huh, that makes sense. That's kind of what they have to learn because they get a lot of information and now it's up to us to um, kind of differentiate which information is the right information. So we have information overload and we never really had that when a lot of us were growing up, especially me, with computers just fairly new when I was growing up. I'm not that old, just saying, but it's just one of those things that you got to um, evolve um, your structure because there's a lot of information out there and, and kids are learning um, just what they're learning is um, has to be guided. 
Um, moving on, in the national news, uh, Ryan Zinke, um, U.S. Uh, represent, uh, re congressman here uh, f based out of Montana, uh, has been, um, Donald, has been um, um, I guess, um, Donald Trump's new Secretary of the Interior. Uh, Montana has the, the largest federally owned lands, which uh, consists of national parks and sev seven Indian reservations. What this means uh, to Montana in terms of in energy dependence or possible mining operations is yet to be determined, but many people are, are thrilled that Zinke will bring Montana values to the White House. So that's, uh, I got that story from the Billings Gazette, and you can read more about that from their uh, billingsgazette.com. Um, in the world news, uh, New York Times reported that the last remaining refugees of Aleppo um, are still stuck in the Syrian uh, city, and over 8,000 people were evacuated before the operation was halted, and they don't believe that um, this operation will continue. And a lot of the Syrian officials say that uh, they haven't made a comment about why they uh, decided to stop, um, uh, I guess, um, getting the refugees out of their own country. Um, so far, anywhere between 50,000 to 100,000 people are still stuck in Aleppo um, while trying to find a way to survive and try to um, deal uh, with ISIS in their own way, living in their country. Um, of course, based in my opinion, um, the reason I think that they start stop the evacuation it is becoming it can turn too much into a liability and Syrian officials don't want to risk uh, the spread or escape of ISIS main forces in the area but you never know what's happening until it happens and all this news is just constantly going on here and I read that uh, New York Times article this morning uh, you guys to go out and see, um, look at it a little bit more I just giving you the little, brief little notes about what's going on with your news and then now it's time to talk about where you guys can find out more information about Wake Up Missoula. You can log on to our website, wakeupmissoula.wixsite.com slash wakeupmissoula. You have to write all that stuff out, and you can totally subscribe to, subscribe to us on YouTube, like us on Facebook, and follow us on Twitter at wakeupmissoula. You could go to MCAT.org, and Saturday Stop In Animation is happening this Saturday, but will be closed um, the next two Saturdays, and then we'll be back open um, I believe it's January 7th, so you guys can check that out. It, it's every Saturday from 1 to 5 p.m. The fee is $10, and kids aged um, 9 to 13-ish can come on down, and they can learn some stop animation, or we can just make a fun little short movie. Um, it gets uh, more practical, hands-on learning. Kids get to learn how to use MCAT equipment and how to edit their own movies, do voiceovers, and more here at Missoula Community Access Television. So that's my little plug for Missoula Community Access Television. Um, as always, uh, I always like to do Flagship Friday, and this is some of the things I do with my after-school program. I have a couple more flagship programs in the vault, so I'll be able to show that um, towards the end of the year. But this one is called um, Demon of MCAT, and this was filmed and edited well, I edited it, but a lot of the kids from Hellgate High School um, filmed it and did this nice little, cute little intro for me. So, without further ado, here is Flagship Friday. Today on Extreme Spookies, we have possessed children. Come on. Let's go see one now. As you can see, this is a very good specimen of a possessed child. His name was Jack Catmull. Now he likes to go by Mr. Frank. Extreme. Spookies. Are you okay? Jesus Christ, it's Jason Bourne! Guys, guys, just relax. What happened? We found you like this. I don't know what happened. I need to get out of here. I need to go. Wait! What are you doing here at this time of night? I don't know.
Well, we're here investigating a disappearance of a friend. So, how long have you been here anyways? I don't know. I don't have time for this. I have to go. Get off me! Get off me! Get off me! I just want to go home! Look, we get that you're lost and confused, but we need to find our, like, disappeared friend, and the last time anybody checked, he was in this building. I don't know. Let's beat him up. Yeah, I haven't beat anybody up in the last 10 hours. Dude, you can't beat random people up all the time. You don't understand. No one's gonna stop me. He killed Owen. Those douche I mean, that douchebag. Is it, is it safe to come out? We won't be safe until we get out of here. We have to avenge Owen. <sighs> man, whose idea was this? Let's just get out of here, man. Not until I avenge my best friend. Yeah, I think I'm with him on this. One, we have to get out of here. I don't want to die. No, we're going to stay here and avenge Owen, even if, and I'm going to do it even if I'm the last one standing. Are you kidding me? That's not even fair. You sack, okay. Wait, you guys, I think I know why he's attacking everybody. Ah! Oh, no, Ellen. I'll get him. Ellen, are you over here? Oh, hey! I also do driveways. Uh, guys? Hello? This isn't funny. Guys? Liam! Where did Jackson go? I don't know. Ellen, we we have to get out of here. This place is weird. There is no way out. Wait, what? What? Uh! Welcome back, guys, and as it is Friday, and I always like to do, there's a whole bunch of movies that come out and premiere and all that stuff, so let's talk a little bit about some of the new movies that are coming out. La La Land, again, I thought it came out last week, but here we go again with the confusion of the alleged op uh, opening last week. La La Land has been the type of movie that has annoyed well before the majority of people have saw seen it. If you are an actor, then you will appreciate this Oscar bait or wait to see it if anybody wins an Oscar and then you'll probably go see it because you're one of those people who are just like, uh, I don't know if this movie's good. Uh, I guess since it won an Oscar, I might as well go see it. Uh. Speaking of Oscar bait, um, sometimes people build fences to pe keep people up, but this movie may help have a problem keeping people in theaters. Um, as we dive into a family trying to make a living while their father holds back the son from potential greatness, just because he's a loser. Um, stars um, my soul brother, Denzel, do I even need to say his last name, Washington, and Viola Davis. She was in Suicide Squad. Um, next up, we got uh, Manchester by the Sea. My worst nightmare of having to raise my niece and nephew uh, for some big dramatic reason in this high budget, lifetime original movie, Starring Ben Affleck's brother Casey and Kalispell native Michelle, Michelle Williams and that guy from uh, the early edition show. You know, you know, not Fisher Stevens, you know, the, the guy, Friday Night Lights, you know, you know that kind of thing. Uh, up next, we got Seven Pounds 2, otherwise known as Collateral Beauty. Uh, if Suicide Guy didn't produce more Oscar baited performances, Will Smith, wait, Will Smith? I'm down, wait, he's not doing the action thing? Oh, he's doing the dramatic thing. Well, maybe wait and see it on video or DVD. Um, Michael Pena is in it. Uh, I liked him in Ant-Man, so maybe uh, maybe skip this movie. I'm not sure. Um, but of course, I saved the best for last. And the best is 
Rogue One, a Star Wars story. As if remembering a better time of Star Wars was enough for this new self-contained potential new franchise within a franchise, um, people are already excited for this pre-episode eight, episode, uh, no wait, pre-episode seven episode of Star Wars based on a single line from an opening credit of Star Wars. Uh, I'm not saying a New Hope, New Hope movie, uh, see this movie, um, created at great cost and see how much money they're gonna make after a couple weeks. I'm all for this movie. Oh wow, what's going on with this? Hello? Huh. Check one, two. I can barely hear myself. I wonder if it's, uh, I don't know if you guys can hear me, because I certainly cannot hear me. Okay. All right, so, hmm, it sounds really weird. I need these two microphones so I can kind of hear myself in my headset. Uh, that pretty much concludes pre-critic, a very messy ending. Of course, uh, there's an Anthony Hopkins movie where he's like an FBI agent or somebody's an FBI agent tracking a killer down, and he's not Hannibal Lecter. So you can guys can totally check that out. And that concludes pre-critic. Up next, we got some teen talk for you guys, and I believe it's what the kids are going to be doing over their holiday break. So without further ado, here is Teen Talk. And this is Teen Talk. Today on Teen Talk, at the end of semester, and what are we going to do with our break? So let's start with you, Owen. How do you feel about the end of semester? Probably have to talk this time. <laughs> Ooh. Bummer, man. <laughs> I, uh, don't feel it's, uh, very bad, just end of semester. <laughs> Not worried for finals? It's, yeah. it's going good! <laughs> Not worried for finals, Owen? No, I'm not. Dude, I just kill yourself. Oh, oh. <laughs> 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 oh ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> Simon Grant. Hey, oh, where are you going? <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't know you were doing a thing. <laughs> oh my God! Are you catching? Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. Well, yeah finals, so finals, you used to call me the dirty Canadian when I was a freshman. Yeah, I know, I did. Anyway, 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 back to back tea. Back to 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 is it, are you talking about me? I'm, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna not tell you, just so you'll obviously. Is it in? Is it in our group? I don't know. Maybe it's <laughs> me. Are you talking about me? Are you worried about know, finals? <laughs> uh, I'm very worried about finals, cause yeah, cause they'll screw you over. Yeah, and they're it's his first a time. whole quarter, and I'm Jack scared because it's like a, a finals big process. Version. Don't worry, they're not as bad as you've heard. They're worse. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But like I've heard that they're like two hours That's long, like <laughs> each period. And I'm not freaking out about like my extracurricular classes, but like algebra <laughs> ones. My um, could, you, could you imagine if uh, M Cat had? Fun? Yeah, yeah, that would be. We'd just be sitting just here for hours. I don't know. Wait, well, I don't know. It's just um, I've never been like, like you know, final. Oh, I just heard that, like in movies, high school, final, freaking out. <laughs> broke up. I don't know, yeah, yeah that's, that's a pain, right? <laughs> Liam? What? Hello. That's a pain, right? Oh, nice hopper for you. Oh, uh, um, I am not too worried about finals this year. I'm definitely not as worried as I was last year because I have pretty decent grades, you know, except for, um, Science. Science not your strong suit? Mm, yeah. 
That's like, I love science. I feel like, no. You identify those. Rocks. I like science, it's just the classes. Not exactly. Do you have biology? Hopefully, yeah. you have yes. Jensen. Aww. Jensen. You have Jensen? Mr. Jensen is awesome. Yeah, I like him. He's just. <laughs> I, I like him, but he's just. I'm gonna like, take um, APS next year. I'm gonna have APS next year, and I'm gonna have Jensen. I'm gonna take study hall next year. It's a requirement. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Alrighty. Ellen, are um, you worried? Not, a, not at all. Not at all. I know what to expect, and I think that's like a really important part, especially like for freshmen. Yeah, like if you're worried about fresh about like um, finals, or not, nothing to worry about. It's not as bad as you think, as it looks, or what people say. <coughs> and um, plus, like now that I'm a junior in high school, um, finals aren't as bad as they were my freshman and sophomore year, especially PE. Thank God I don't have to take that. God forsaken class anymore. Lucky. I know, right? I'm so you guys happy. Are lame. That's my favorite class. No more. Liam, Liam do you have no a more disgrace to the group. Please <laughs> leave. Liam, do you have Wolstead? No. Yes. Linstead? Linstead, right? No, Wolstead. Oh, there's, there's a Wolstead, Wolstead also. Wolstead is. Wolstead is yeah, they're Wolstead not related. Like they the look like they're arch. related. That's not confusing. <laughs> oh, wait. Are they, yeah, they're uh, both PE. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're both like teachers, yeah, and they're they look, both beards. They yeah, both have beards, and they, they both are bald. Exactly yeah, they look alike. Like. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but, like, I, then I'm so glad I don't have to listen to that freaking modern pop music anymore. Thank God. That's like, that's why I left. They actually all right. played, they actually, wait, 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 really quick. They actually played Nirvana when we were doing running. No way. Yeah, and a bunch of other grunge artists. Jack FM. And wait, ACDC. Wait, so, yeah. Do you have any holiday plans? Well, what? Neil, I really want to ask you know. how you were thinking about finals. This is your last final. Uh, yeah, Neil. Your final final. Oh, no comment. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> your second to last. Final. In that case, take the word. All right. Take Do we have any plans for a break? I'm staying at home. We have a short break this year, right? Yeah, it's like yeah. Yeah. Holy, so short. Let's, Holy. let's see what we're going to do. Swimming, <laughs> swimming, and more swimming. Yeah. As you can tell by his outfit. I'm better, yeah. I'm better at swimming than Owen is. For the record, uh, I'm going dude, to kill really you. Bad, bad, bad. Shut up, you know it's true. <laughs> All right. Hey, hey, hey let's not give my life. Are you going anywhere, anywhere, Jared? I am staying home this uh, year. Yep. Yeah, and um, they don't make the point. I'm gonna. Well, we're probably gonna do the same thing. Uh, visit other families of friends. Yeah. Oh, so um, one thing I did um, with um, with some of our Christmas decorations at home was that like in, like there's like you know like the little barn with like the figures of like the baby Jesus and there's Mary and Joseph and like like you know you've seen those sets before, right? Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. And there's one that was like from like the old days. Activity that, scene. Yeah. Yeah, that I took out. The, um, last year, I took out the Jesus and replaced it with like a little mini leg lamp from a Christmas story. Oh no! Oh, I'm a Christian. <laughs> I find that offensive. <laughs> <No. laughs> <laughs> I'm totally joking. Uh, okay, so then this year, this year, this year, this year, this year, I did the same thing except I replaced. Um, I put like Ralphie, uh, like a little figurine of Ralphie from a Christmas story in the pink bunny suit and put that between Joseph what? and Mary. You have that? Yeah. <laughs> It used to be an ornament, but the ornament thing broke, so now we just have it part as part of a decoration. So, I'll show it to you guys later. It's really cool. All right, do we have anything else to close this out? Uh, uh, see. Uh, this is Teen Jobs. Uh, uh, well, so this is Teen Jobs. Hey, welcome back. Uh, we got some city council for you guys today. That was Teen Talk, and that was the season finale tier. And now we have a little a bit of some city council. Just to give you guys a knowing what's going on, I'm just going to jump right into it. Um, starting at 10.55 a.m. Wednesday morning, it's time for city council committee meetings. Uh, city signs, um, it, a con city, the city signs a contract with High Noon Petroleum for five years of refueling city-based vehicles, snow plows, and more plows. Uh, they get 3.5% re off the retail price, a whole 5% increase from their last deal. Uh, also, the city purchased a wood chipper and pothole patcher unit, which replaced the current 20-year-old 
pothole patcher, which might have been old as well. And then they will, uh, and with the wood chipper, uh, the city of Missoula now has three wood chippers. Uh, moving on, in admin and finance, the city hopes to uh, get a developmental agreement with a TIF, which is a tax increment financing. So basically, created a tax um, stream from building um, owners um, when they're doing construction to help finance other city needed construction. And in this case, will be devoted to Front Street when Lambros will be paying for an additional 150 parking spots when they build their 500 unit apartment complex, which can be like a hybrid student thing. So here is Chris Bean. Um, to explain. When you look at the, at the various plans, it's pretty clear that, uh, that, that, that we have a, a project that is in the realm of what they thought was appropriate to separate the downtown and the, the, the neighborhood. And, and in terms of prioritizing parking in this area to develop the whole uh, Front Street District, it's also an appropriate use of, of that priority and, and the funds. Uh, and I think that the, the, down, the urban renewal plan, actually there's a quote in it that says, lack of available parking and the high cost of developing private structures are ranked by uh, interested developers and property owners, business owners as being the greatest impediment to investment consideration in the district. So Oh, so um, that was Chris Bean, and he was explaining the basic uh, idea of like helping increase parking to help increase um, you know, population and uh, local business and stuff like that. Uh, this is a big step forward for the city to help battle the overall lack of parking in the downtown area. 150 spaces will not solve the problem, but when you provide more parking than the even unit requirement, then you're on the right track. So Chris Brian talks about the downtime in terms of growth and how it looks in the future. For downtown to grow, for retail and, and other kinds of businesses to grow downtown, it needs to, to move toward a more of a 24-hour downtown where there are more residences, and those residences need to be a variety of students, uh, median-income people, uh, low-income people, and uh, above-market housing. It needs to be a, 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 so that that adds to that big customer base that's potential, uh, that potentially can back, be accessed by retail folks in the downtown. Um, All right, so. That was, um, that was Chris Bean once again, and his last quote I have from him is, uh, businesses in Missoula, according to Bean, have held on because of basically stubbornness. He says to himself, Missoula has to be a place where people can have a revolving door of businesses. Um, like, places to live is like, it's a constant, you, you pay money for your rent and you live there 24 seven and you're downtown 24 seven. But with a lot of businesses, they're not open until 11 a.m. because Missoula doesn't really open until about 11 a.m. And of course, MCAT is always open at 11 a.m. 11 to 7, you can check it out here at MCAT. You can log on to MCAT.org for more information. But let's get back to the uh, city council. Bian also talks about the university hybrid living structure that will be built um, when Lambros uh, builds their new property off of Front Street. Um, the university also to market a new kind of, of living for yeah, it's students. The model is really a hybrid uh, of dorm living and individual apartments. It's uh, it's not offered at any of the the Montana uni ma ma the universities at this point. Although there is a similar kind of uh, facility being built in Bozeman, um, just off. It's quite, actually quite a ways from campus. It's a different different situation in terms of of access and and cars. So okay, so um, with uh, the within this new hybrid dorm area one thing's for sure is that while the student population may be going down perhaps maybe the uh, pbr sales will go up who knows but um we will not know that for sure until it happens and that basically kind of wraps up the meeting being says that the parking commission would own the additional parking in it that are created by this TIF, or otherwise known as tax increment financing. So a lot of um, construction and building that is being built, um, they will add this TIF just to kind of encourage um, businesses to build uh, more parking for the structure. So it's kind of like a whole additional level of parking. So moving on, Committee of the Whole, capital expenditures was one of the words that was swinging around. 
um, when the city acquires Mountain Water Company. This will play a huge factor in the rate increases and adjustments throughout how much the city can repair that Carlisle said they would improve. But like any holding company, they only have to hold a company long enough to sell it. Um, here is Tasha Jones. She is one of the uh, former, um, um, well, she's, she's, she's the Missoula's attorney. She's from Great Falls. She helped Missoula's um, in the process of acquiring Mountain Water Company and, of course, the, uh, the hearing in terms of the determining a price. So here is Tasha Jones, uh, or Natasha Jones, and she's here talking a little bit more about that. But, but the core of the system is extremely old. It is extremely dated. It is um, built with um, materials that are that are out of service, um, and um, and leakage is a huge problem in the system. We also learned uh, through the litigated process that the the folks that own the system, and that would be um, the remote owners in California, then Carlisle, now the Canadian group, um, they only invest in capital if they can get paid a profit on that. And it really it limits uh, the scope of what those remote owners are willing to do. And what we saw through the evidence was that um, the, those owners, those remote owners, had woefully underfunded the local group here. They had done um, much more capital investing in California um, to the detriment of the Missoula system. All right, so that kind of uh, sums up what uh, what was happening while Carlisle w was um, owning um, Missoula wa Mountain Water Company is that they were owning three water companies, aka Park Water, and they just wanted to fund one thing over another. So basically, all the money was that was put into Mountain Water was um, used to expand and not repair. Um, honey pots look a lot bigger, a lot, a lot. Honey pots look a lot better in bigger bowls, uh, but bigger bowls. Uh, but also hide this the cracks. So anyways, uh, I said that all terribly, so I'm sorry about that. Uh, here's some um, pictures of the current water system in place with Tasha Jones explaining a little bit more about just some of the more intricate um, replacements and um, assessments that need to be um, done to repair Mountain Water Company's infrastructure. It was our expert from HDR, and he did an assessment of the system. And again, he found the core of the system to be in fair to poor condition, and there's some photos um, there. Part of the problem is that there is a significant um, portion of the system that is not metered, and that creates problems um, in addressing, identifying addressing areas of leakage um, in, in order to combat that. Um, we found that 50% of the pipes, the underground pipes, were 45 years or older. 20% of the mains had exceeded their uh, useful life. Four billion gallons of water were lost on an annual basis for a, a leakage of unprecedented magnitude of 50% or greater. And, and all of this information was based upon Mountain Water's own internal documents. All right. Um, so the next part... We have, uh, <laughs> um, it is it is basically a broken system, according to Missoula. And a lot of the trial was based on saying that, hey, Carlisle, you have a broken system. He hasn't fixed it. And that's one of the reasons why we want uh, our mountain water company is because we will take care of it. We won't just, like, buy it and just, just go, like, oh, yeah, put a couple Band-Aids on it and just kind of move on with that. Um, uh, but, of course, according to mountain water company, for, uh, President John Kappas um, from Mountain Water Company, they uh, they would replace 1.5 miles of pipe every year, but of course they would have to require 2.5 to 3 miles that should have been replaced in terms of rate of replacement of old pipes. Um, that was according to his statement um, during the trial, which in numbers was about a million dollars per mile of leaky pipes that needed to be replaced. That's how much it costed per mile of pipes. Uh, one of the main uh, arguments Carlisle Group talked about was the clay type of soils in Missoula, which made it difficult to find leakage because according to them, leaks are what forms on the surface and not underground, um, which from mountain water, they knew how much water their pipes lost from the pumping stations and metering of said water. Um, Harlan Wells is concerned that the cost for leakage repair would be a homeowner bill or even worse, a community bill, and Tasha Jones kind of answers that as well. 
If somebody found out that my service line from the center of the street to my house was leaking, that bill's on me. But you're saying with you municipal ownership, that cost is going to get shared by the community and not just the homeowner? If you, if you go back to um, our last meeting, this is exactly the type of um, policy that is going to be before you to address as a community. Um, and so th these decisions will be yours to make. All right. So basically she said, she said um, it's up to Missoula to figure out who's going to pay for what in terms of replacing leaky, leaky pipes. So that kind of just, I could have just said it myself, but I just kind of wanted to do you to hear it from them themselves. Um, the less talking I got to do a little bit better because I'm just doing a terrible job because words are hard. Um, the city plans uh, a big, uh, plans a budget, uh, but I wanted to give you a little background on what some of the costs or lack of costs Carlisle invested in the capital expenditures. Carlisle, Carlisle again, is a holding company. Um, John Kappas, oh, actually, this is not John Kappas. This is John. He's from this engineering, uh, the city. Um, he talks about a 20 to, I mean, five to 20 year plan with a uh, water main replacement with Tasha also talking about it from Helena's leakage problem. When what they when they had their leakage problem back in the day, and then you have to you have to consider, uh, you know, at some point is there an appetite to increase rates to tackle it more? Uh, how much are we disrupting traffic in a given summer? There's a lot of variables, but uh, I would hope we can continue at that you know three to three point five million dollar rate for another five to ten years. And I'm sorry, I'd be totally guessing if I tried to give you a percent uh, mitigation of the leaks. I would just add that um, during, the, during the course of the litigation, we presented evidence regarding the city of Helena. So the city of Helena had a, had a leakage problem in their system, and they invested a large amount of capital, and part of their capital push was to make sure the system was fully metered. And uh, at the conclusion of the five-year um, uh, push on that, they reduced their leakage rate under 20% and brought it into industry standards. And so we've seen in our state um, that this is a problem that a community can tackle and be successful in. All right. So um, from what she said, that uh, uh, the requirement, the I guess the national requirement of leakage assessment is you cannot have uh, more than about 20% leaking in the water system. But um, in Missoula, it was, it was well over uh, half of our, the water leaked from our pipes as well during the water trial. Um, but you can check out more of that. Uh, online during this meeting and they moved on to public comment and these two uh, folks who come for the public comment represented mountain water but kind of like the old mountain water just like they were opposed to the acquisition of a, a public municipality this is Ross Miller he was consultant with the uh, the legal team that was uh, the defendants in the uh, Missoula versus Carlisle group uh, Algonquin and all that stuff going on there, and he think he thinks that the city's uh, taking too many risks, especially with uh, short-term financing in terms of the budget in repairing these pipes. And he also sent a letter, which is also available online, which is signed by a bunch, a couple of the Mountain Water Company um, big wigs, basically. And then I'll go over a few uh, bullet points. Uh, one, short-term financing is a huge risk. To hear the city cannot acquire this, the uh, system under fixed interest long-term financing and is instead asking the council to approve short-term variable rate interest rate that adjusted monthly, which is currently at 2.8 percent, is a little shocking. To then hear that this would be placed with private investors with no insurance, that it could be refinanced in 18 to 36 months is, is again, it's just shocking. You were given extremely bad news at your November 30th Committee of the Whole meeting when you were un in unequivocal terms, it was told to you that you do not qualify for long-term financing. That was big news to this entire committee. Yeah, for the record, committee. that's not true, <laughs> but uh, yes, go ahead. It, yes, it was. Um, so uh, to those major flaws in the in administration's financial model, number one, the, uh, the water system revenues are overstated by at least uh, 500000 Dollars per year in Mr. Bickle's August uh, projections. Uh, Mr. Bickle cherry-picked a dry year out of those historical years instead of using an average year, which results in a $500,000 per year over-projection of your revenues. The water system expenses were understated by one and a quarter million dollars per year uh, in those same projections. Coupling those that $500,000 overstatement with a one point one and a quarter million dollar understatement, the net revenues that you've got are 
overstated by one and three quarter million dollars. Um, additionally, on day one, you're, say, you're, you're projecting a 6% raise in, rev in revenues, a 6% raise in rates. The mayor states that that's a de minimis raise. We disagree. Six percent. All right, so that was Ross Spiller, and he uh, was with uh, Mountain Water as a consultant. Uh, up next, we got a quote from um, president of Mountain Water Company, John Kappas. Um, of course, on a side note, um, let's see, did, uh, he was on Mountain Water's side, um, Carlisle, during the trial, and it was uh, opposition of Missoula during acquisition and hearings, and from that statement, he's clearly still opposed to Missoula's acquisition of the water company. Uh, here's John Kappas. He is the current and maybe future former president of the Mountain Water Company, but I don't want to get ahead of myself because you never know what's going to happen until it happens because they're still in the process and they hope to acquire the Mountain Water Company in January. So anyways, here's John Krappis. Today I came here thinking that this was going to be about short-term financing and I thought our letter would, would speak for itself, but then it became a discussion on capital at Mountain Water Company. So I know we haven't been asked information about that. I'd be more than willing to provide information. I know we only have three minutes here. Because then instead of addressing a lot of those issues, then I hear that although we provided that letter to try to help, Ms. Jones is disappointed that she thinks folks are trying to somehow, or well, we haven't come to terms yet with the condemnation. And it, and it really, where we're at is that we believe that the terms you're trying to come to are financing terms, and those are short term at this point, and that's got to be something that you really have to look at and take seriously. Um, as far as what's going on in um, Judge Halligan's court, we filed our brief this week, and so I'd encourage all of you to read that to see our position and why we don't believe the, what I said in affidavit and what Mr. McGinnis has said is wrong, but it is truly the facts as we, as we know them. And last, I, I, will, I will address something that was talked about. Ms. Armstrong brought it up as far as the pro formas and what was presented today in capital. If we have labor going to capital that you don't like, if we have transportation burdens, those are costs of transportation, if we have tools, if we have admin, what that is doing is that's bringing those costs all, off of our income statement. So our, our expenses are less because it's being reflected in our capital. If now, under city ownership, it's going to be accounted for differently, that means those costs are still there. You still have the same. Mr. McGinnis, his labor now, the amounts that went to capital, if you're not going to put that to capital like we do, it will now be on the income statement. Therefore, your income statement projections are too low on your operating costs, even more so than we discussed in our letter today. So All right, so you can find out more information by reading the letter at the Committee of the Whole Meeting. It's at the ci.missoula.mt.us. You go to Agenda, Webcasts, and Minutes. Um, you can find out more information. Go to Agenda, Webcast Minutes just right here in this general f vicinity um, to find out where you can watch this whole entire meeting because it's a long meeting, and I just got the basic cliff notes of what's going on uh, with Mountain Water's acquisition from the city of Missoula. The meeting was cut short because there's still a lot to be discussed that have been difficult uh, because of Mountain Water's uh, communicating with the city because according to some of the uh, people at Mountain Water, the company is not a public utility until it's a public utility. So they're not really uh, working with the city as much and they sent this letter also an hour before the meeting um, so there's just a lot of things going on there, and uh, Ross Miller and John Kappas uh, from the Mountain Water will be talking with Tasha Jones, hopefully, to talk, discuss a little bit more about uh, clarifying some of the errors that were um, discussed uh, via their public comments. So for more information, you can log on to cia.missoula.mt.us, or you can type in City of Missoula, and it's the very first uh, website that pops out on your search engine, mostly Google, because most of you probably even use Google. Who uses Bing? Um, but that concludes your city council report about mountain water and wood chippers and stuff. So um, right now, let's talk about what's happening with your, um, what's new on MCAT tonight. So 
with, uh, without further ado, here is some of the stuff you can watch on MCAT. And when we come back, we're going to talk about and events. So what I want to talk to do today is about our welcoming community, something that I'm very proud of to be a part of here in Missoula, Montana, but something that I think that all around America is, in fact, in, in threatened today. So I want to talk about this idea of what it means to be a part of a welcoming community and what it means to take part in, in, in the transformative process of making America truly a great place. So 45 years ago, my family left uh, a communist dictatorship. My family fled uh, uh, Fidel Castro's Cuba, and we wound up in America. And, the, and, the, and, and for me, it's, uh, it's been an interesting process to be a part of this, uh, of this great experiment we call uh, America. My family left a country with nothing but the clothes on their back. And like all Cuban Americans, they were proud of, of, of working and taking part in this American dream and being able to share in this dream uh, this, this, of this wonderful nation. But they didn't do it alone. And that's one thing that we have to remember, that they were, in fact, dependent not just on federal largesse, not just on government programs, but a whole community of social workers and teachers and coaches and people who cared and good neighbors who, in fact, welcomed them to this country and made their lives possible. And so Cherie so Newman said I'd invented this genre, you know, fly fishing noir. But the, <laughs> but the truth is I don't, I don't have more than... Uh, two or three scenes in the book about fishing. And they'll actually have a, a round table discussion at Penguin. I've actually seen the table where they'll, they'll decide whether I have one fishing scene too many or, you know? <laughs> so my first book, I was told to get rid of one scene. My second book, I was told to add two. So you learn to, to walk that fine line. <laughs> Hey, welcome back. It's time for some events. There's a new art, new art installation happening this morning, and it's called Ryan Federson colon resistance or resilience. No, resistance. Resistance. Uh, the resistance is not futile, for it is time for a little bit of events. This is uh, Seattle-based artist Ryan Federson. Um, he's confederated tribe of uh, Corville Reservation. He creates a multi-layer environment and interactive sculptures. Um, Federson's work is a tongue-in-cheek but with a pointed message that considers the role that art and creative industries play in creating sustainable communities. And you can check that out. It's opening day. Ryan Federson Resistance starting at 10 a.m. at the Missoula Art Museum. You can totally check that out. It's pretty awesome. Um, next up uh, and that's basically kind of like my highlight for Friday. So here is some of your quickly Fridays. They have women's circle acupuncture happening at the, uh, which is happening at Mountain Sage Acupuncture Clinic, happening at 2 p.m. this afternoon. Uh, family fun time at the Y is happening uh, today, this afternoon at 3:30 p.m. You can check that out. It's just a fun way to get in touch with uh, the YMCA. Um, Teacher Recognition Day at Imagination Brewing Company at 6 p.m. Live Bingo of the Dark Horse at 7 p.m. Uh, Missoula's um, 
Illuminati's uh, 216 Cannon Coat Drive Concert is going to be at Monk's, so they're going to do this for um, providing coats for people in need. Um, there's a Moth Fundraiser Concert at the Top Hat Lounge. And here are some of your um, Friday night events, um, Friday night music events. There's the Andrea Herschel. She's be playing at um, Missoula Brewing Company starting at 6 p.m. today. Um, Irish music session at Union Club, so if you guys just want to sit around and listen to Irish music or want to participate, bring your fiddle and start playing on down. There's a Christmas with Lewis and Clark at the Paradise Center, um, and that starts at 7 p.m. tonight. Emo Night at the Palace, you can check it, it's DJ, neat rock music, Emo Night, just kind of like self-explanatory, it's starting at 9 p.m. Um, there's the 406, it's playing at the Sunrise Saloon, you can check that out, it's a country band at 9.30 p.m. Tom Catmull's Radio Static will be playing at the Union Club at 9.30 p.m. It's kind of like an experimental NT rock band, you can totally check it out. Uh, his kid was just in the Flagship Friday video. Um, Dead Beats, Pucker Up, Body Meat, and uh, Permians will be playing at Old Beck BFW. It's going to be a hard, heavy rock, heavy metal music happening Friday night. Um, but of course, for your here is some of your stuff for Saturday. Um, Saturday is the perfect time for markets, and Hip Holiday Market will be at Mount Jumbo School. Uh, join for the eighth annual Hip Holiday Market, a unique craft fair featuring all things local and handmade, as well as their renowned renowned bake sale, um, live music, raffle drawings, and this year, De La Cal Taco Truck. Um, Lowell School is currently under construction and will be hosting this year's event at the temporary location, Mount Jumbo School in East Missoula. Um, um, it'll be happening Saturday, December 17th from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. It's at 735 Michigan Avenue in East Missoula and it's brought to you by Lowell School PTA. Um, there's downtown carriage rides, so let's take a look at this. Boom. So if you guys hate walking, and you want to go on a nice little carriage ride every Saturday and Sunday from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. You get a ride on free carriage rides. And they pick you up at Pine Street. So it's the new art park by the Missoula Art Museum. Wait there. Listen for the clicker, 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 clicker. Uh, I, I, that's a terrible. Click clap, click clap, click clap. I, I'm, I'm really terrible about hor like horse sound effects. <laughs> yeah, horses. Just listen for the neighs. Um, um, not, but not the whips, just the nay -nays. Um Enjoy a family friendly outing and experience the holiday spirit in downtown Missoula with free carriage rides provided by Paws Up Ranch. So you can totally check that out. Um, moving on, you got Yule Mini Psychic Fair. Um, Water Lilies is uh, celebrating Yule by hosting a mini psychic fair. Start the New Year's. Uh, for 2017 with a reading and find out what the year holds for you and or get insights for current situations then after your reading shop for your ritual tools and celebrate Yule in your own home with your friends Saturday December 17th 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. and it's gonna be at Water Lilies um, <laughs> they'll know you um, are coming um, they will know whether you come or not me they know I will not go but Noelle McAvoy would totally go because she's like a super crazy hippie psychic lady. She doesn't watch this show anymore anyways, you know. She used to be my co-host and I really doubt she's even going to watch this show for this. Um, Chief Charlo, um, Barnes & Noble book sale uh, started at 11 a.m. tomorrow. It is Chief Charlo's Barnes & Noble book sale. Um, it's at Barnes & Noble just off of Reserve Street. Uh, the Great Monty Mystery is at 11 a.m. And you get, of course, you get to meet Monty at 2 p.m. at Barnes & Noble. So the mystery is revealed by 2 p.m. So you got to get there by 11 a.m. to see all that mystery. And a performance by Chief Charlo Orchestra at 12 p.m. Oh, cute little kids playing orchestra. Just You get to check that out. Happening 11 a.m. on Saturday pretty much at Barnes & Noble. There's dreidels, dreidels, dreidels at Missoula Public Library. Missoula Public Library's Children's Department hosts the program Dreidel, Dreidel, Dreidels um, during this program, kids and their parents will decorate wooden dreidels and learn how to play the game dreidel. And then participate in a game of dreidel 2 to 4 p.m. in the children's department at the Missoula Public Library tomorrow. Uh, and one of my favorite things I definitely want to highlight is, enough said, Reggie Watts. I'll be going to this fun little comedy music show which stars Great Falls native Reggie Watts as he entertains through the use of uh, misdirection comedy. Uh, which is kind of like spontaneous improv music comedy show. It's at the Wilma Saturday Night. Tickets should still be available, I believe. And that's Reggie Watts for you guys. And here are some of your Saturday 
special events, Puzzle Club is at Lucky Strike Restaurant, um, Hip Hop Market, again, <laughs> Okay, Santa is at Sweet Barnes. Uh, the Sweet Barnes is hosting a fundraiser starting at 1 p.m. on Saturday. Grieving over your pets over the holidays, 2.30 p.m. The public library is having a nice little grieving over your pets. Um, getting over it and uh, ways to remember your pets. Um, di dive in movie Finding Dory will be at Kearns Aquatic Center. Um, it's an interesting place to watch uh, Finding Dory in the movie. So at 6 p.m., you can totally check that out Saturday. Um, Hayride Christmas Caroling. So if you like uh, hay rides and Christmas Caroling, you can totally check that out. It starts at 7 p.m. and it's going to be a nice little fundraiser. And let me just double check and see where it's actually happening. Uh, it's going to be uh, Linda Vista neighborhood. So you go down to, uh, I, I believe they probably start right next to the golf course at Linda Vista. So you check that out. It starts at 7 p.m. They go around in a sleigh on a hay area and you can do some Hey, ride whatever. Okay, so Missoula Folklore Society Contra Dance is at the Union Hall at 8 p.m. So you'll get to learn how to uh, square dance and the old folk way of dancing and all that stuff. Um, then, if, then uh, all your Saturday music events is Sugar Skulls and Mary R. Gold and guests will be playing at Old Beck at 9 p.m. Travis Yost with Saturday Night Live Music Series, Imagination Brewing at 6 p.m. Captain Wilson's Conspiracy, Missoula Brewing Company, Reggie Watts again, Wilma Theater, 7 p.m. Salsa 406 will be playing at Dark Horse Bar at 8.30 p.m. Absolutely with Chris Moon is going to be at 9 p.m. at the Badlander. Zeppa Montana will be playing at 9.30 at the Union Club Saturday 4.06 We'll be continuing their run at the Sunrise Saloon. In case you missed it tonight, it'll be playing tomorrow night at the Sunrise Saloon. The Ghost Peppers will be playing at the Top Hat Lounge at 10 p.m. Um, but that's pretty much all your Saturday events. Let me see if there's anything on Sunday. Um, there's a West Side Lanes is having a sip and shop. So over 20 venues will be there so you guys can shop for things that you may or may not need for your holiday gifts. Um, and then finally, I'm gonna just do one more last plug in this last couple minutes of my show. It's A Christmas Story, the musical. I'm gonna be in this show. We have a show happening tonight at 7.30 p.m. Uh, we have two shows on Saturday and Sunday. Uh, Saturday, there's a show at uh, 2 p.m. and 7.30. Sunday, we have an earlier uh, evening show at 6.30 p.m. and our matinee is 2 p.m. You guys can totally check that out. It stars me. Uh, no, actually, it stars a guy, another kid who also name is Scott. His name is Scott Larson. He plays a little Ralphie, and he has an amazing voice. And once puberty hits him, he's in trouble because he he has such a very beautiful voice that it, puberty will totally destroy. That's what happened to me. Living dark times. But, of course, we have a great weekend for you guys lined up. Uh, just a nice little run-through about what's happening through the weekend. Uh, thank you for joining me. And for Wake Up Missoula, I am Scott Ramp, and I'll see you guys Wednesday to talk more about what's happening here in Missoula.